What's up, everybody? Welcome in to The Call Up. Jillian Sackovitz alongside my best friend, Susanna Collins. Hey, girl. Hey. Who has big questions for you people at home <laughs> that she needs you to weigh in on. <laughs> career, career changers, my friends. <laughs> big time, big time. I'm at a real crossroads in my life. <laughs> big time, big time. We also have a big time superstar on the show, president of business operations for DC United, Danita Johnson. Her story is incredible. And all the experience that she has outside of MLS, WNBA, NBA, the NBA uh, G League, and then, you know, bringing it all here to the Eastern Conference. It's just, uh, it's an insightful, incredible conversation. So stick around for that. And if you're wondering what a president of business operations does for an MLS team, she answers that too, which honestly, I kind of wanted to know. Absolutely. Because I didn't know. And she told us. So there you go. I've got some good here for this. Is Please. Jill, this is. This Serenade is- me, girlfriend. Woo! Boy, um, these are really fun. Okay, so <laughs> this is random, random, because, um, I, you know, when I think of chicharito, I don't necessarily think of snack food, but in this case, I think it works. So there is a bag of Lay's. This was tweeted out. It's a bag of, like, Lay's potato chips, but it features none only than Chicharito, and he's like kicking it, kicking the ball ever so coolly. But it's like it's a it's a spicy flavored potato mm. chip. Pota- and I'm just like, well, this is not something I expected to see ever. But yet, I am here for it. But it begs very me. LA of him, right? So LA, like getting those endorsements. But here's here's the question: Who, what other player would you like to see on a bag of chips? And what kind of chips? Okay, I have two thoughts on this. Yes. Okay, so I'm disappointed to hear that the cheech chips are a little picante. Not that I'm surprised, but I'm not a girl. I'm not a spicy girl. You've seen me with wings. I can't even eat mild wings. I know. I know. I'm a real loser. Like if there's no. like a little like spicy salt on the margarita, I'm like, no, leave it off. No jalapeno. And, and I'm Susanna's like, burn like, my face in. off. <laughs> I'll take them. So growing up as a kid, I was such a sucker for sour cream and onion chips. Oh. Good choice. And that's kind of a Hungarian thing. So uh-huh. I'm going to go Daniel Shallowy chips. Yep. But then on the other side of things, I'm going to go Joseph Martinez because I feel like his chips would be like, what were those candies growing up that like exploded oh. in your mouth? Um, pop Nerds? Pop Rocks? Nerds? Pop Rocks were pop the ones rocks. that literally like like yes exploded and there was that rumor that if you if you drank like <laughs> coke with the pop rocks like you would have a heart attack yeah so um my inner self wants to just eat a lot of sour cream and onion chips with daniel Ooh. shallowy um that's a little bit of a hungarian thing but then i also want to try a joseph martinez chip that like could kill you i think that is adorable that was like actually really thought out and now i well, just... believe it or not i put this much that's just i'm, <laughs> I'm very impressed i'm very impressed um... i love chips i love <laughs> chips oh god who doesn't i mean come on let's let's just they're they're delightful um but so yours? i went i went so basic and obvious here because i was like chips there's who, no basic chips. Who, chi- who, who 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 chips a lot who do i like to see doing a little chipping and i went with the one and only wando i could just tell you know like a little wando classic a wando chi- it's, it's classic so i'm picturing like just like a bag of like good old basic fresh lays because that is to be honest there is few things that i enjoy more than like when you re- open that bag and it's like it's just so fresh and they're so crunchy and delightful. And that is how I feel when I watch Wando score goals. You know so, what yours would be? They would be lightly salted because lightly Wando salted. has had a lot of longevity and you can't have that by having the full salt <laughs> amount. <laughs> okay. I've been really excited to gauge you on this one because I think that this is, this is going to be a, a this can be a polarizing topic so more than chips more than (laughs) chips definitely so you know on instagram you've got like your your dms and then the there's like the message requests right like that from people that maybe you don't follow and that's where where those go um this is not going where you think it is i was gonna say is this about foot fetish people because i got them too listen that's a whole other (laughs) 
P.S. Not here for foot fetish. No, stop asking no, me in my no, request. No, 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 no. Also, there's they're like, not that nice. I promise. There is a whole foot like website oh, that like so rates sick. foot. I know. Rates feet, and mine are actually on there. I checked, and it's embarrassing. Yeah. What'd you get? I think it was okay. It was like decent, but man. Anyway, oh, that's a ca- tangent. Casual. That's a casually tangent. cool. That's a tangent. So <laughs> I always like I forget that this exists, like these message requests. So I looked in there and there was um there was a message in there and it was it's someone with a blue check mark. And I was like, interesting. Cheat your dough. No. But it was someone from Cameo. And they were like, Hey Susanna, we would like to offer you a spot on cameo, you know, like the thing that where celebrities can wish somebody a happy birthday, yeah. happy anniversary, way to go. Good luck with this, that kind of thing. And I was like, what? Like, I was like, huh? And then, so then I go on cameo and I wanted to see like who else, like if, if anybody else, in the MLS sphere is on cameo. Who's on there? So Max Bredos is Amazing. on there. Okay. Julian, Julian Gressel is on there. Felipe is on there. Oh, um, DC United. Russell, Kna- Russell Knous, Knous is on there. Another no, DC okay. guy. Like, so. But you got to ask like, Danita Johnson about But that. then I, I'm thinking about this and I'm like, I, th- number, I don't think I'm here. I don't think I'm here for cameo because I'm thinking about, I'm like, who the heck is going to ask me to like, send them a bur- and like pay for it i feel s- like such a a jerk like oh you can pay for me to say happy birthday like i just feel like that is so cringe and i am not here for it but then well, like, i, I pay see for really- a message from you chill also you have a fantastic a good- singing voice you're a good friend so you're maybe that's what they want is your i don't know voice. But I was just, but like, so I'm in this conundrum of being like, oh, I like it when I see them, like people post them on social media. I think they're like really funny. And, but like when it comes to myself doing it, I'm like, no. And then I'm oh, looking at like, that's because you have a soul. Felipe and like Max Bredos, like out there on Cameo, like, hey, I'll send you a message. And I'm like, if you, like, if you tweeted at me and were like, hey, Susanna, can you wish my brother a happy birthday? I'd be like, yeah, cool. Like I would do it for free, you know? Whatever. Don't tell, don't tell people that you're, no. you're sabotaging but, your cameo profile before you even start are it. You, so what are your thoughts on cameo? Cause okay. I, when it comes to myself, I'm not here for it No. So two things. I had my first cameo purchase just about a month ago. Mm-hmm. We purchased for my dad, a Ahmad Rashad no! birth, birthday message. So good. See, I love that. A hundred dollars well spent. And then my mom was like, you know, like we just like put them in the living room, like, oh, let's turn on the TV. And then we like, you know, mirrored our phones to it. And all of a sudden he's like, hey, Lou, what's up? It's Ahmad Rashad. And I, and like, he was floored. Like one, how do you do this? It's like the modern day uh, memorabilia, like getting someone a signed ball, but it's like the 2021 version of it. So in that way, it's really great. But the one place that I find it slightly morally corrupt is like my mom kept being like, so where does the money go? And yeah. I'm like, it goes to Ahmad Rashad. Like, you can't hate on him because it's like, you all these guys have like signings, right? Like, go to this um, cafeteria and yep. for $100, Ahmad Rashad will sign your football or this guy will sign your baseball, whatever. Like, I remember once Gordy Howe was signing hockey sticks for like a certain amount of money. Like, that's what these guys do. So this is that version of it. But in, in my heart of hearts, I loved what I've seen, like Andy Cohen of Bravo did one around the um, Democratic National Convention. He wanted yeah. to raise money for his political party. And so he he did cameos for a good cause. And those I'm super here for That's doing them for cool. a good cause. Um, I also love reality. I feel like it's made for reality stars, like <laughs> getting your favorite star, like a cameo for your friend is a, is a good one. <gasps> okay. I... Hundred percent, I'm with you on that. I I do enjoy that, and I love that you did that for Lou. I think that is so. Alana, great. my sister thought of it. We gotta give credit to Alana. Love Alana. Well done. What I up, Lou? It's a mod for shop. It's so good. It's so good. It's so good. I just don't think I could bring myself to like put myself on camera and be like, "What would you me? charge?" I don't know. It's a other thing. Like, what the heck? So a mod was a hundred bucks, and I actually thought it was going to be more. So like, what's a Susan? What does a Julian Gressel cameo cost? I don't know. Let's look it up right now. Can we look this up and see? I'm gonna go on Cameo right now. 
And here's the other thing. If I was their teammates, this is so mean of me. If I was their teammates, I would almost buy cameos just to troll them. Right? Exactly. Because it's like, it's a little funny. It's a little funny. It's a little self-indulgent. Like, you know, the ribbing I feel like would come. Okay. I'm looking up Julian Gressel right now. Let's find this out. You guys, this is happening in real time. We're investigating. Oh my God. Okay. $40. 40 bucks for Julian Gressel. So Susanna Collins, like, could I get away with charging like 10? (laughs) Brad Guzan is on there. Stop. You, you could easily charge. I'm going to go 30, 30. If Julian Gressel's 40, you think I, you are the voice of MLS soccer.com. Stop it. Brad's Brad's is 75. I have to pay $4.99 to DM him though. I want the public to weigh in. I want our viewers and listeners to tell me if you think that I should go on cameo or if you think it is like the most cringe. My vote is yes thing ever. I need you guys to weigh in because I I my initial reaction is nah. But now I'm sort of like, hmm. Maybe I'm intrigued. I should. I could put the money towards a good a good cause. We could come up with a really good a really good place for it to go. Like right? For clarity. Exactly. Time now for our AT&T 5G call to the field. And we are so pleased to bring in DC United's president of business operations, Danita Johnson. Danita, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. Um, this is such a, an honor to have you on. We feel so lucky to to have you in the, the MLS family, um, but you've made the move to mm-hmm. D.C. For after your time in, in the WNBA, the yep. Los Angeles Sparks. How, how are you sort of settling into life in the nation's capital? What's that been like? You know, I walk a lot more than I probably used to. <laughs> We drive a lot in LA, uh, but no, I've loved it. Um, it's been a lot of fun. The staff has been absolutely amazing and welcoming, um, learning and loving the sport. Um, you know, we had our first home match back in April and I was like, I hadn't been, I've been to live soccer games before, but I had never been to a DC United game prior. And I was like, oh, this is great. Even with the reduced capacity, I was like, I cannot wait till we pack this place out. Oh, it's incredible. Audi Field is so beautiful and special and when that i've been lucky enough to get to uh some playoff games there and i've got i got goosebumps um you're just you're gonna love it when that place <laughs> on a nice it's just like oh it's incredible yeah on a nice day there's really few things <laughs> yeah. let's um you know Susanna mentioned the wnba you have that experience the nba the g league everything basketball and and other things as well why was making the move to major league soccer the right move for you right now you know what i i talk about i love challenges i thought this would be something so different and unique um, i've been basketball for mainly like 15 years of my career and i understand the business side but like the excitement of the sport to change the game a little bit to do something different for myself professionally and personally it was exciting. Mm -hmm. And I think where DC United, you talked about it, right? Like the chills you get from this, the history of the club. You know, I've worked for a lot of historic organizations. I like that. You know, when I was with the Sparks, it was one of the first franchises in the W, just like DC United. And there is something special when you work with an organization that was one of the originals of a league. And to be a part of that history and to help tell that story. It was exciting for me. And I think DC United is continuing to be on the rise. Yeah. They are such a storied franchise in this league, just incredible players um, and coaches that we've seen coming up through, through that system. Um, And it's also, I love the fact that you're bringing in this sort of outside perspective, you know, and in MLS, we've got a lot of people here that have been here a long time and that is great. And there is so much value in that, but I also love the fresh perspective that you will yes. inevitably bring um, to DC United and to MLS in general. So like I said, we feel so lucky to, to have you. Now, Danita, you are the, the president of business operations. And Jill and I were chatting before and I was like, I don't even know what that <laughs> means, what that entails. Can you explain to us um, what what your job is? What does it mean to be the president of business operations? Yeah. So I, I'll try to explain it as simply as possible. So everything that doesn't happen from a technical side of the team, I oversee. 
Okay. On the club side. So everything for the club that's not on field when it comes to players, when it comes to, you know, like the GM duties, Lucy does that. Dave Casper, they handle all of that. Everything else, when you think DC United, when it comes to the actual business operations is what I oversee. So when we look at ticket sales, partnerships, fan integration, what we do in the community, our brand, our story, our identity, merchandise. Um, we work with our partners with fan- fanatics with those, like all of the operational pieces of the business that keep us running every day is what I oversee. That's probably the simplest way. Thank you. But so you're, you're on the phone a lot. You're doing a lot of Zoom calls. I do a lot of Zoom calls. <laughs> I just bought some of the blue glass, the glasses to yeah. help look at your screen. Yes. On it. How did you wait a whole year for this? <laughs> <I had> them. <laughs> no. They look good. If they do nothing else, they look good. Let's take a step back, Danita. Um, you're a native of, tell me if I'm saying this correctly, Fayetteville? Fayetteville. Fayetteville, North Carolina. You got um, it. Can you tell us about your childhood? Yeah. So I actually grew up, my dad was in the military. So I was like what they would consider an army brat. Mm-hmm. So when we're, I was the youngest. And so I was the one that didn't get to move around as much as everybody else because I was born last, but they mm-hmm. lived overseas and did all these things. And then I came along and we lived in Germany for a little bit and that was about it. But I uh, grew up in Fayetteville and that was my hometown. I uh, grew up there playing sports, went to high school there. And then I went to high uh, college in uh, Western Carolina, out in the mountains of North Carolina. So it's a little bit about me. Beautiful place. I've got family in North oh, Carolina. Oh God, Greensboro, and yeah, and I love North Carolina so much. And I'm so excited. I know we're talking about DC United, but I'm so very excited that Charlotte got a team. <laughs> uh, it's great. It's great. It's great. It's just good for soccer. Yes. Uh, good for soccer in in general. So you said you played sports growing up was sports always a, a, a part of your life when did you know that this was kind of the the direction that you wanted to to take your career in uh when i quickly realized i couldn't be a professional athlete <laughs> same <laughs> you just know you just know <laughs> My talent wasn't there, um, but no, I grew up playing sports and it was just that, like, it was my safe haven as a child, right? It was the place where I first met friends. It was the place where I found, com- like, camaraderie. And so with that, I was like, how do I transcend this into my life in some capacity? And that's how I ended up working in sports because it was it was my safe place. It was where I felt at home. It was where I felt welcomed. And I think about it now with DCU and it's like this all are welcome, all are united. It reminds me of, like, how I got through childhood. Well, well said. You've said before that you're big on a quote winning uh, culture. You know, all the DC United fans love to hear that. What does that mean? Like when you're handling your staff in a, in a zoom meeting, and then I have a quick follow-up question uh, to that. Like the winning culture, winning culture. It's funny. So I get, I go back and forth about using the word winning with it. Right. Like it's cause I think the winning happens when you build the right culture. Right. I've been with teams that I've won championships with, and I feel like there's this essence that comes along with it. Like when things are just clicking, when you create a great place to work, when you create, you know, um, a sense of belonging and it takes work. We, we have work to do that. Like it doesn't happen overnight. I never say like, oh, I can't say and be like, we're perfect. No, we're going to get there. We're going to work through that. But I think there's this thing that creates that creates to me the opportunity to win like when you do all the little things. And so we have to work through the details to actually create an opportunity to win. It's just like as detailed as you are on the field or on the pitch, right? You got to work on your footwork. You got to work on your defense. All that stuff plays into the factor to win the game. And so for us off the off the pitch, we got to play the de- work on our details to go out there and win. Something that I saw so much of in 2020, whether it was our leadership big picture or leadership in your own little team at your own little club, is I think you really saw a separation of good leaders versus bad leaders because we needed to lean on people big time last year. And you very quickly saw who kind of could handle leading and who who couldn't. So what would you say is one thing that makes a good leader? And then what's something that makes a a poor leadership? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think the ability to listen. Mm. And I'll say on the back end, the inability to listen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Keep your ears open. Yeah. <laughs> and that, and I think the second piece of that is decision making and being decisive. Mm-hmm. I think that's also very important. Like you have to make a lot of tough decisions. And sometimes you have to be decisive in that, knowing that everything you do won't please everybody, but you have to make the best decision for the organization as a whole. 
I feel like this is so translatable to just life in it is. general. Yeah. <laughs> I am like, I'm Deneva, having a lot of moments. Deneva right can now. be my yeah. life coach right now. <laughs> and I'm sort of like replaying all of these decisions. <laughs> that wasn't the best one. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, it's uh, incredible, incredible insight. And so very true. Your, your MLS journey you came here after, as you said, uh, spending you know most of your time focusing on basketball time with NBA, the G League, WNBA. What have you learned about MLS since you joined? Is there is there anything that kind of oh, took yeah. you by surprise? You know, how are those cultures kind of different? I'm not gonna say it took me by surprise because I kind of knew, but when you see it live, it's different. <laughs> mm-hmm. Fandom is next level soccer right. fans is neck like right. I love basketball I love a lot of sports but I must mm-hmm. say the fandom it's solid like mm-hmm. it is next level like kudos like to all the fans that it's you talked about it earlier about like kind of coming from another place right and like you have new perspective but I also believe in respecting the space too right like the way that the fans actually create the environment mm-hmm. for the entertainment and stadium it's just different. And I think it's phenomenal. It just shows you their level of engagement with the actual game. When you came to DC um, this year, you know, storied franchise and original uh, team, like you said, but we see it, you know, just with Columbus and, you know, them having uh, a rebrand of sorts earlier um, last week, but <laughs> Um, I want to know, like, what was the first thing you came in for DC and that you implemented? What was the first thing that you came in and said, all right, this is where we have to grow. This is where we have to change. Oh, that's a great question. I think for us, it's, it's a couple pieces. It wasn't just one thing for us, but right. one was reestablishing where we stood in the community mm. and what was important to us and aligning our values. So realigning with our values and understanding, not saying they were lost, but let's like really get them down and understand who we are and what our true mission and vision is as an organization and starting with our why. And now that we can refocus on that, we have an ability to move forward. That commitment to community, I think, is is a really it's a really important aspect, especially in in soccer, because you mentioned the supporter culture. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, like it is we are we are literally nothing without the fans, um, in this, in this sport and Don Garber, a commissioner, um, had spoken. He, he said that, um, the fans are the soul of, of the league, which I think is a hundred percent true. So how do you, how do you kind of integrate that? How mindful are you of the supporter culture when you are making those decisions and you're thinking about the things that you need to, to work on, um, when it comes to DC United and, and areas where you want to grow and see progress, how, you know, our, our is supporter culture, um, a part of those decisions. Yeah. And early on when I first started, I know it's still early. I think it's like four months. So I guess <laughs> here or there, but I'm taking the time to meet with each of our supporter groups. So like I've sat down and met with them. It was virtual obviously because of the current circumstance and I'm excited to like be able to spend more time with them, but meeting with each of our supporter groups, hearing what's working for them, what's not working for them. What do they want to see from the club and putting that into my, process and thinking. So there's always a pinpoint for them when I think through things and how it affects them. And so as we move forward, now that, you know, things are starting to progress, we can do more. Um, But like spend, like we did a meeting with everybody and then we did individuals with each of them just so that we could have time together and truly understand like, why did, why did you start your supporter group? What does it mean to DCU and what's important to you and what do you value? What community groups do you work with? And then maybe if there's something that we could support, how do we work together on that? Just really understanding that and having that dialogue and taking the time to do that, I think was really important for me to understand who who they are, what they mean to the club, and how we can be a resource for one another. That's so cool. Really is. Um, if you look at another team in any sport, it doesn't have to be soccer, but who's done it right over the years and found a way to be do it right consistently, who's a team you kind of look to? <laughs> I think there's a couple. Um, soccer-wise, probably because it was in my backyard at that point, watching LAFC come to life was pretty amazing. Yeah. 
Um, I see your hat back there. We're going to have to get you a new one. Uh, (laughs) 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 But, um, but yeah, so I think watching that come to life in my community, in my backyard over those couple of years and seeing that when I was in LA was pretty phenomenal. I think from a, from a, um, MLS standpoint, I think, Ooh, trying to think other sports, what else would probably really go? I mean, I think from a basketball perspective, I like what the 76ers did over the past few years. Okay. I, I One, I think their leadership is phenomenal from a business perspective and what they've done. But like even through like wins and losses, I think organizationally and how they've showed up for that city has been pretty amazing to watch. And the evolution of that marketplace over the years from being such a storied franchise from years and years back and how they've kind of revived. Um, I think you see that in Milwaukee a little bit as well right now. So those are some that I find interesting, but specifically from an MLS, what I'm looking at right now, I think, oh, in Seattle. Mm. Sorry, let me. Oh, gosh, no. <laughs> Seattle, Seattle for sure. Um, I think they've been pretty phenomenal in what they've done over the years. Yeah, it's, uh, I think you hit the nail on the head specifically. And it's interesting because there are two, you know, Seattle is a club that, that's been around a lot longer and has had time to cultivate that incredible supporter culture that we see. And, and LAFC is, you know, a, a relative newcomer. Um, but to watch that come together, as you said, you were in LA, you saw yeah. it, you saw it happen. You saw the rumble in the city. Yeah, it's, um, it was, that was, that was really, really striking. Um, and something that we obviously hope to see much more of as, as the league continues. And how do you never, yeah. ever miss the playoffs, which Seattle has still never, ever done. Right? So it's exactly. like, there's yeah. like, it all aside from, yeah. Danita, we want to get to know you, um, you know, not just as the businesswoman that, that you are, but you, you as a person, when you are not in the boardroom, when you're not on Zoom calls, when you are not uh, finding solutions to, to a variety of, of issues, what, what are you doing? What, what do you like to do in your, in your free time? I think I'm a pretty fun person. I bet you are. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm I'm like I feel like people want to hang out with me most days as long as I'm not working. Um, but no, I one, I love sports, so I, I mean no matter what, I'll always watch a sporting event. I love to go to live shows, which I've missed. So I'm oh. really excited to go back to concerts and shows. <laughs> um I have a, probably a shopping problem. We won't need to discuss that right <laughs> now. Um, doing my free time now because it's COVID friendly. Uh, but I'll say that I, I'm big into cooking and traveling. Everybody knows that about me. Like those are like loves of my life and like try to hit the gym as much as possible because it keeps me sane and it makes me a better person. What's your go-to meal? What do you love cooking? Oh, I would probably say I make a killer lamb. I make, oh, oh, I make a really good nice. lamb. Um, and then I make homemade pizzas from scratch. Now you're just making it's a whole thing. Just, yeah. You have like those the dough, ovens the and, dough and everything like, yeah. fresh, oh, geez, Danita. Yeah. yeah. I a shame. And I can make them healthy too. Cause I'm, I'm a little bit like that. So yeah. Ooh, that, yeah. The homemade, pizza's real. The homemade pizza. Pizza night in my house is pretty fun. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That sounds like a call up episode. It does. It yeah. actually does. Danita on a, on a more serious um, note on December 22nd, 2020, uh, you made history when they announced that you had the accepted the offer to be DC United's president of business operations. Uh, when you came into that role, you became the first black person and third woman to serve as the president of an MLS club in the league's history. So one, applause. Thank you. Thank you. But two, I have to ask you, when you get, when it, when this type of conversation comes up, how do you handle it? Because we have had uh, people of color, women on our show, and we always get the gamut of how they want to handle it. Sometimes we've had w- women in leadership positions that say, specifically their team tells us this person doesn't want to discuss being a woman Mm -hmm. for the reason of normalizing it. Right. So Mm -hmm. we respect it. And then we get women that we'll talk to them for 20 minutes about the challenges and we'll all go on about being a woman in this space, but then adding being a woman of color in the space, how do you handle those conversations? And like, where do you stand on that? First, I love how you asked me that. Cause you didn't just, I just want to say that because most people ask like, how did you feel about being that? So I just, I appreciate how you asked me the question. I think I try to handle it based upon a little bit about the audience and, and what what who I'm speaking to about it. 
And I say that in a respectful way, not like I need to change my answer every time, but I think for different audiences and different mm-hmm. people, they look for, there's certain things they look for from myself within this. And so I think there's different insight that I have to provide to different people when talking about my role, my race, being a woman in this position. Yeah. And so I think that's kind of how I go about it. So it's like in certain dialogues, if I'm speaking in a, in a room full of women or, or or things of that nature, and they're asking these questions to understand, to help them be better, I don't mind talking about it if it helps somebody in that space and mm-hmm. gives them the ability to grow. Um, and so I think that's where I kind of go with it. It's like, what, what's the need for it? And not saying, no, like you can't ask me and say, what's the need and how is it going to push the conversation forward to help the people in the room? I think that's, it, that is so, that's so true um, and completely relates to something that you've said before about the importance of impact. And, you know, we can talk yeah. about the, um, the, um, the importance of impact and education <laughs> is important, but ultimately it's the, it's the impact. And so when you have these conversations, it's like, what's the impact, you know, is, is this conversation going to create another conversation and maybe, you know, eventually we will see progression and things will start to be, be normalized. And so I feel like that's, that it it sort of encapsulates your view on the importance of, of impact. And on that note, Danita, for for you, and it can relate to these issues, or you know, you can answer this in terms of like the club. But what does impact look like to you in the position that you're in now at DC United? What what do you hope the impact will be? What do you want to see? Yeah, in the simplest format, I try to break it down. This is probably because I'm such a numbers person, right? <laughs> um, I like to see percentages of growth. Yeah, and I don't like financial growth for the club, we're talking about like impact, we talk about community making a difference, right? So like how many lives can we actually impact through the programs we do that make an actual difference? Like when you have this these homegrowns, you think about like a Bill Hamid who like was in like our youth programs and is now our goalie and like what that actually we means. Love that's Im- right, that's impact, right? Yeah. That was impact because we were present in the community. We were present till he had a place to go and play. And so like those are measurable things. And I think there is, there's two forms of that. There's the measurability of it. And then there's the overall presence, right? And so I think for me, it's looking at it in both ways. And so there are going to be things that we need to measure success in when it comes to impact. And there's things where we are just present. And I think that shows up in its own. Would you say DC United is looking to grow the diversity of their fan base? Or is that something you guys are happy with where you're at? I know like we just spoke to Justin Morrow plays for Toronto and he he wrote something really touching where he said that being in front of the fans uh, for an away game at Atlanta United was like one of his most pinch me moments because he had never seen that many other black people watching soccer. And in a city as diverse as DC, is that something that you guys think about? Absolutely. And I think we have a very diverse fan base, but can we grow that? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what we're going to continue to do, right? That's part of the work that we have to do. But I think, you know, I look at like our supporter groups. We just had a new supporter group that started over this past couple of months called the Rose Room Collective. It's an all diverse supporter group that actually just started a few months ago. And they're focused on bringing in more minorities and introducing them to the sport. That's cool. And so I think there is definitely ways that we can continue to do this. Um, and I think that's going to be a part of us. And I think it has been in the past and it, and it still is, but we just got to kind of put our foot a little bit further into it, like a little harder at it and, and continue to make sh- strong strategic moves to do so. Love it. Well, Danita, we can't thank you enough for your time. We are so absolutely thrilled and honored to have you in the league at DC United. Um, I'm, I can't wait to get back to DC United For real. And, yeah. and say, Hey, at a, at a match and, and we can <laughs> take in, we can take in all the, uh, the fans and supporters together. You've got it, 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 the, the chants. It's the, you know, the way that they, they chant and stand for the entire it's so game. Good. It's just like, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. just the best. Yes. Just the best. And I see your sign back there and I literally have this Jersey on my <gasps> Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Like, I was like, oh, mine's sitting right here. I just got it recently. And I was like, this was stolen. But <laughs> you're supposed to put like my dream is and like uh-huh. a, a little girl like messed up. Yeah. 
Again, you like say what your dream is at the game, and she was like, "I need another one," and I was like, "Oh, perfect! I'll take that because then I can take I can take a poster and not feel like I'm taking one away from you guys." So that's Smart. where this came from. Yeah. yeah. Smart thinking. Awesome. Smart thinking. Um, yeah, Danita, thank you so so much for your time. We so really great. appreciate it. What is on tap? Reminder that May is Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. Asians in MLS, the league's Asian Employee Resource Group, invites the entire MLS community to celebrate. You can head on over to MLSsoccer.com to find out ways that you can get involved. We love it. Um, yeah, man. <laughs> Chill. Well, this is fun. This is a good episode. I feel great. So I feel good. great about this. I'm still on the fence about the cameo thing. So it's let it's, us know percolating in there so guys guys give me answers tell me what to do i need help we love you thanks for listening thanks for watching Mwah. what's up everybody it is susanna collins and jillian sakovitz co-hosts of the call up and if you want more call up action hit like and subscribe right here on YouTube, right there. And also make sure that you download every episode of The Call Up every single Tuesday at 5 o'clock Eastern Time or anywhere that you get your podcasts. And while you're here, why not check out some of these other videos as well?